little fur baby here. This is Mouse. He looks like a puppy. Most people think that he's a puppy, but he's not. He is an old, old man. We call him an old man. He's probably about 12 years old. We've had him, no, 11 years old. We've had him 11 years. And this is the four baby. Oh, this is the guy. We just love this little guy. And he is quite spoiled. A little camera shy, but quite spoiled. And of course, we all know that this is an Instapot family and we can't leave the fur baby out of the Instapot. So today we're going to make some dog food for this little guy right here that just stole my heart the moment I saw him. All right, so let's get started. Let me just wash my hands real quick. Sorry about that. Let's see, let's see, let's see. I've already got this started to going, and what I did, let me turn this down just a tad. There you go. Now, um, what I did is I've already got this started to get it heating up, because what I wanna do is pour a little bit of oil, and because I'm making dog food, I'm not going to use a lot of spices or seasonings or anything like that, and because it's for the fur baby, I'm going to use olive oil. Um, I don't want like anything that's really a lot and I don't you just need just a little bit just enough to coat the um, just enough to coat the bottom of the of the pan and it's pretty hot because I let it sit for a moment and what I did is I got some ground chicken so I'm gonna take this right here and I've got you, you place your your um, I'm using the little baby I'm using the baby He's my three quart, and you see I've got it, you got it on hot, but you gotta use the saute button. So you select your saute button, let it get nice and hot, and then when it's ready to go, you just take your hamburger or your chicken, hear that sizzle, and um, we're gonna just let that brown a minute. And while this is browning, I'm gonna tell you what I use. I use about half a cup of broth, and this is why I don't put no seasons, because this has seasoning in it. And so I put um, half a cup of the broth with half a cup of water. I put these little petite carrots, and they're not a whole lot, but a little bit. And I'll put a can of green beans, and I've already got it ready to go. I won't use the whole can, but I'll um, you know, use about half the can with the carrot, um, with it, and then I will also Put some sweet potatoes in there. Now, if your fur baby is having um, bowel problems, you can always use a little bit of pumpkin puree. That kind of helps soften the bowels as well. Um, but if you're not sure, just go ahead and check with your vet because I'm not a vet. I just had my vet tell me that because my little guy had some prostate issues. And so, um, we were told to give him some pumpkin puree. And it seemed to have worked or, you know. Um, but anyways, so while this is browning, I'm just gonna let this get a little bit more. And again, remember, we don't want to, um, we don't want to, to put any seasonings in it because again, it is for the fur baby and some seasonings may not be too good for them. So um, I'm gonna let this brown for a minute and we'll be right back. Okay, so we've got it browned. As you can tell, it's looking pretty well done right there. So um, now that we're getting this browned, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and um, do the rest of the ingredients and I know that some of you are thinking why in the world would you go through all through that all this trouble just to make dog food well first of all he's our fur baby we just love him I mean he's he's part of the family and um so we want to make sure that his his diet is just as healthy because you know we want to keep him around as long as we can and being that he's a little dog we need to um make sure that he eats right he eats healthy and the main reason, if I had to be honest, is because this dog is the most finicky, the most finicky dog that I have ever seen. I, I mean, he really does have a finicky appetite and we're always struggling to feed this dog. And we have found that when we make a homemade, you know, when we feed him adult food or dog, I mean, people food, not adult food, but people food, 
he will eat it. So instead of giving it to him off the plate with the seasonings and the spices, um, I just make it. Plus, it's cheaper for us to make the meal because, you know, dog food, to get the really good dog food, it's expensive. We subscribe to one of those um, subscriptions out there that make the food and send it to you, but they get kind of expensive. And, you know, the Instapot, we can do almost anything. And I just told my husband, let's just start making his food. So we did, and this is what we do. And so now that I've got his meat browned in there, I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my broth and water mixture. I use half a cup of water, half a cup of um, the broth. And then I use, I don't know what size cup, this is that Pioneer Woman, and it's the, it's not the tiny one, it's just the one next to the tiny one. And I'm gonna pour that in there now. The key is you want to make sure that all the rice is covered with liquid. You don't want any rice sticking up because if you do have rice sticking up, it's going to be very hard. And because he's an older dog, um, he um, has, you know, he doesn't chew as well as he used to. So I want to make sure that it's nice and soft for him. And so I'm going to add the sweet potatoes in there. And all I did was just take, you know, I buy the bag of sweet, the small sweet potatoes, and all I did was peel and thinly slice these. Now, when they're done, I will turn this into a puree, so to speak. I will puree it, make it like a mush for him, so that way it's all blended together and he just doesn't see all these colors and freak out. And then I'm going to put a little bit of green beans in there. Not a lot, but just a little bit because we've got to have some green in there. And, and this will make enough for a few days. I mean, he's not gonna eat all of this in one setting, of course. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put it in the vacuum bags um, and seal them and freeze them. And then, you know, take one out the night before, you know, when we go to bed. So that way, when we wake up in the morning, it's um, thawed out and we can just heat it up and, you know, stick it in the microwave for a little bit. And sometimes we will mix it with his regular dog food because we do have regular dog food just to make sure that he's getting those nutrients as well and then I have a little supplement here that I will chop up and um, give it to him with his serving I don't put it in the whole thing but I do chop it up and I um, feed it to him when I serve it I, I you know powder it down and I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit more water I'm not going to put broth because the broth does have seasonings are ready and I don't really want it seasoning so but because I've got the rice that will expand and sweet potatoes I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more I can always drain it at the end or use it when I puree it and have a little gravy and there you go there it is so now I'm going to put my little top on here I'm going to turn off the saute. I'm going to cancel that. Come on. And um, before I do that, make sure that there's nothing stuck on the bottom from the saute. Because if you do um, have food stuck on the bottom, and it's, it's it happens to me all the time. Well, it used to. Um, when I first started, I, I didn't know. But I kept getting the burn button every time I would um, saute, and it was because I wasn't really scraping the bottom off. So now, you know, I'm going to give you that tip. If you're going to use the saute button, make sure that you got all the burnt stuff off the bottom. So that way, you don't get that burn notice, and it'll cook all the way through. And make sure, again, that all your rice is covered, that you don't have anything over your rice. And then um, we're going to put the lid on. We're going to put it on pressure cook, and we're going to cook it for seven minutes. Why seven minutes? And my, my things are already set for seven minutes because I made rice in it last night. Why seven minutes? Because it takes, for the rice to come out the way that we like it, it takes seven minutes for it to, uh, oh, before I say that, make sure that you're on um, ceiling. You don't want it on vent. You want to make sure that you're on ceiling because it needs to pressurize. And if you have it on venting, it will not pressurize. So make sure that your little knob is set to ceiling and then just let it go. Um, and, but you know, back to the seven minutes, I put it on for seven minutes. For one, your chicken is already pretty much cooked. Um, two, the, the, um, the sweet potatoes and the carrots are really going to cook. They, you can cook those in three minutes. Um, but the rice takes seven minutes. 
um, for the rice to come out just like we like it nice and soft and, and fluffy, it, um, it takes seven minutes. So the rice has to cook in seven minutes. And so that's why I set the timer for seven minutes. Now, when it's ready, I'm going to let it self vent for probably about five minutes. If it doesn't finish within five minutes, then I will, um, quick release the rest of it and then puree it and, um, feed my puppy or feed my baby. So, um, but anyways, when, when, um, it gets done in about seven minutes, I'll show you what it looks like. And until then go enjoy seven minutes and I'll see you right back. Okay. So let's see what it looks like. Oh my gosh, it even smells incredible and no seasonings and it just smells incredible. So anyways, now I've um, let it, you know, it cooked the seven minutes and then I let it um, sit for about five or six minutes and then I had to vent it just a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on venting so I don't forget um, when I cook with it later. But now let's go ahead and open it and see what we've got in here. Oh my goodness, can you see this purdy? Look at that. Look at that. That's dog food right there. And so I'm just gonna mix it up. And it's a little runny and that's okay. Um, it's got a, a, a little juice in it. And that's okay really because I need that to, um, when I puree it, it'll be, it'll have a little bit of liquid in it. But there you go. So this is how you do your own dog food. And I spent $3 on the, the, um, the ground chicken. I spent $2 on a big bag of sweet potatoes. And I spent like 98 cents on the carrots and then the green beans, 72 cents. So. And then the chicken broth just a little bit and i'll use that for something else so um probably i don't know maybe six seven eight bucks at the most i've made this healthy dog food for my my fur baby and this will probably last us through the week um and there you go there you have it it's a nice healthy meal for the dog and um i think it just works out cheaper in the end you, you think if it's going to last a week, that's $8 a week, eight times four, that's $24. And we were paying $140 for a subscription of, you know, um, six weeks worth of food. And, and so I, I can do the $24 a month. That's still cheaper than the big bag that we buy. The big bag that we buy or the little bag that we buy of the wild blue or whatever it is that we get is like 15 to 20 bucks. So... Um, and then we do have that, but that lasts us a while because we add it to the food sometimes, you know, one or two, two or three times a week, we we'll mix the, this food with that food just to make sure that he's getting his supplements. And then I will also, that's the supplement that I ground up. And when I put his food in here and get ready to serve him, it'll mix up with that. So anyways, the Instapot is even good for the fur babies and your family. So don't leave them out. Make sure that you give them a healthy meal using your Instapot. And that's what's cooking for the fur baby today. Y'all have an awesome day. Be blessed. Thank you.